Are you still awake? Hello, love. <laughs> Quite a lot of travelling we've gotten done in the past couple weeks. Are you nervous about getting to the Dwarf Kingdom tomorrow? Yeah, Lil. Well, what have you heard of the Dwarves? They're a bit stiff. <laughs> you know, that's not exactly untrue. Yeah, oh, well, well, uh, how about I tell you a story about Nimdivar? Sort of help put your mind at rest. Yeah, good, 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 good. Let's see, let's see. We have lots of stories about Nimdivar that are fascinating. There's uh, the dwarf giant and his ilk. Uh, there is um, their rise to power. There's the Diagbast, known as the generous king. Um. Let's see. There's the castle in the sky, which is a good one. Um, there's the blind prophet, which is great. The, hmm? You want to hear about the blind prophet? All right, get comfortable then, because I am going to tell you. A long, long time ago, many thousands of years back when the gods roamed the earth and there were none but the dragon gods around. Yeah, I mean it. Only the dragon gods, the elder gods. None of the uh, young gods were around. And the gods, um, they ruled over the land in a very direct way. Uh, do you know the story of their departure? <clears throat> very brief recap then. Um, the dragon gods left, uh, two lesser beings, sort of demigods, in charge while they left this plane of existence. They said that they had business elsewhere in the holy texts, but if you go to the Elisar Fidon commemorative library, memorial library, sorry I always get the names confused, if you go to that library in Brindamere, in Albera, Oh, yeah, I've been to Albera. If you go there and you look in the book of absolute history, you'll see the real reason they left. It's because they weren't gods. No, 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 no. They, they were just very, very strong magic beings, right? They could manipulate the earth, and they couldn't be killed by anything on the earth because they were so strong, but they weren't divine gods. They were lying. And when this particular dwarf priest was walking, he looked up and he saw the dragon gods rip a hole through the dimensions and fly home. And what he saw blinded him for the rest of his life, burning magic runes onto his eyes. And he professed and proclaimed for the rest of his days that the gods were not gods, that they did not need to be worshipped. 
Now this is the part of the story I think you'll really like. He took on acolytes, people he taught to draw from the wellspring of raw magic. At least that's what they call it. I'm not a magic user myself, but supposedly it's enough to kill you if you don't know how to do it properly. But there was an orc named Stilvanach who went to study with the blind priest and became a powerful sorcerer. Now this orc, Stilvanach, was like you. In a way, rather than being uncertain, he was a he, but he wasn't born that way. He started as a she, rather, she was born in a uh, female body. But he was a he, and he knew it. And when he went to the blind priest, the blind priest did not turn him away. He did not tell him, you cannot stay, or you must allow us to call you a woman. He simply accepted him, Steve Anach. You are one of us. It's beautiful. And then they used that raw, divine magic to give him the body he'd always wanted, to change him chemically. And he was much happier thereafter. In fact, he went on to fight in the great cleansing of Cthulhu, the shifting of the age. Isn't that incredible? <laughs> I thought you might like that story. Now get some shut eye, and I'll tell you another one tomorrow night when we're in Nimdivar, because we've got to cross through the gates tonight to get there. And then it'll be a straight shot north using their trains. And then we're fighting vampires. Good night, my love.